Old Boy was released in 2003, and almost 20 years after its initial release, it's still a movie that holds up today as being one of the best movies made. And it provides an unsettling, chilling, and haunting experience when watching that makes you question everything. Following Desu as he was released from captivity after 15 years, revenge is a dish that can be rather sour in the mouth, especially when you don't know what you're ordering. So I thought I'd break down, analyze the characters, and give my thoughts and opinion on this classic movie, whilst also giving my theories on the ending. So let's get into it. Here is Old Boy Ending Explained Analysis and Review. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The Ending I think the main takeaway and talking point from the movie is the ending. That final scene in the snowy forest to be precise. But let's get there first. So after we had the massive reveal at the end that Wu Jin had kept Daesu in captivity for 15 years and was tormenting him long after he was released because when they were younger and at school, Daesu spread the rumor and the truth that Wu Jin had intimate relations with his sister, Sua. And it was ultimately the very thing that made her want to end it all due to the shame and the words that were being spread. This made Wu Jin want to set out to spend the rest of his life working on a plan that would make Daesu regret the day that he ever spoke those words. This was what was perfect about the line that Wu Jin said in the present day. You've been asking the wrong questions. It's not, why did you keep me locked up for 15 years? You should have been asking, why did you release me after 15 years? And this was because the plan was ready. We thought we would see revenge being served to Wu Jin for locking Desu up, but it was actually the other way round. When Desu confronted Wu Jin in his penthouse with the book that was on the side, it was a photo album which had photos of Desu's child as she'd been growing up over the years. And it turned out that his daughter was in fact Mido, who was now 18 years old. Wu Jin waited until Mido was of age, which was 15 years after Desu was taken, and then released him, so that they would naturally get closer to each other after being hypnotized. And then they'd partake in the same kind of activities that Wu Jin and his sister did, Ensuring that Daesu felt the shame that he made Wu Jin's sister feel all of those years ago when she ended it all. Was there any inclination that Mido knew that Daesu was his father? Well, when they first met in the restaurant, she said to Daesu, You look familiar. Have we met before? To which it was just brushed over. Whilst this was happening, there was a box in the room where Mido was being kept, and Daesu was begging her not to open it over the phone. So much so that when he got off of the phone, he cut off his own tongue in front of Wu Jin, as a way of showing that he knew that the words that he spread all of those years ago caused devastation in Wu Jin's family. And by cutting it off, it meant that he'd never cause harm with the words that he'd say again. He said that he'd be Wu Jin's dog, slave, anything, as long as Mido didn't find out their actual relationship, as he was disgusted by it and knew that she would be too. Wu Jin ended up walking off and whilst in the elevator on the way down to the ground floor, he realized that he had fulfilled his life's purpose in seeking the revenge that he so desired, that now, he almost had nothing left to live for. He missed his sister deeply and we saw that he was semi-responsible for what happened at the dam as he let go of her when she fell. And this was where he realized that he could no longer live without her, and he ended it all too. With the sound of Daesu and Mido being intimate together being played through the apartment, with the broken Daesu hearing it all, the last we saw of him was ever so slightly in the future. He was out in the woods and he was with the hypnotherapist who previously worked with Wu Jin, and was a main reason as to why Daesu and Mido ended up on a path together. He wanted to be hypnotized out of remembering what he had done with Mido, and he wanted to be able to live his life without the shame and disgust being present. As this was happening, she said, When I ring my bell, you'll be split into two persons. The one who doesn't know the secret is named Daesu. The one who keeps the secret is named the monster. When I ring my bell again, the monster will turn around and begin walking. With each step, he will age by one year. When Daesu woke up and when Mido arrived, she saw that there were footprints that were leading towards the chair where Daesu was hypnotized, showing that he had mirrored the actions of the monster and that he had the persona of the monster that was stuck inside of his head, showing that he would never be able to forget what he had done. The secret was stuck with him. The haunting and chilling smile at the end was also something that supported that. It's very much left up to interpretation, but as Mido tells Daesu that she loves him, a line that sent shivers down my spine. He looks as though he's in pain and suffering, having to live with the haunting familiarity that he once inflicted on Sua. 
There was a moment that occurred earlier on in the movie where Wu Jin said, You want to torture me? Do you want revenge? Or do you want the truth? And it did make me think, if Desu had have just acted out his revenge in that moment, he would have never known the truth, and he wouldn't be living as the monster at the end of the movie. He would have never known the truth behind his connection to Mido. The ending is powerful, so very powerful, and it takes you on a real journey when watching it. I didn't expect the ending to be as dark as what it was, and for the twist to even arise. It's a true psychological journey, and you leave feeling extremely messed up. The Hallway Fight Scene One element of this movie that stands out a lot once the movie finishes is the hallway fight scene that occurred in the early part of the movie when Desu discovered the location of where he was being kept for all of those years. There is a two-minute single-take shot that's simply incredible, and it's a moment that heavily inspired some of the scenes that we've seen in more recent pieces of television, like Daredevil, which paid a homage to that specific scene that I'm talking about in the Netflix original show. You really see the struggle that Desu is going through at that point, and outside of its incredible cinematography and choreography. This moment stands as a part of the movie where it felt like there was never going to be any going back for the character. He'd taken on 10 men when the odds were stacked against him in order to get that revenge that he so desired on the person that put him there. The training against an imaginary person definitely worked, and this was a moment that was not only visually striking, it was powerful from a metaphorical sense. And it provided a scene that was executed so differently to the rest of the movie, but it was in line with its stylistic and experimental approach. Overall Review If you follow me on Letterboxd, you'd have seen that when I watched this movie and rated it after, I gave it 5 stars, the highest possible rating on the platform, and I rarely give out that high of a star count. I found that when I was watching it, I was just hooked on every word that was being spoken and every beat of the rhythm. I could never have predicted that when the movie opened, when I was watching this drunk guy acting like a buffoon and messing around, that it would have turned into one of the best psychological movies that I've ever watched. The journey that we went on as a viewer was rather symbolic of the fact that Desu had been trapped for 15 years. I felt like I watched 15 years of my own life pass by as I slipped deeper and deeper into this movie, and all it got was a whole lot darker. The performances in this movie are just simply faultless. They have so much conviction and you really feel the pain and suffering that's present amongst everybody there, because they've all suffered at some point in their life. The reveal of why Desu was in prison to then having an abrupt twist and having Wu Jin's revenge being the most powerful part of this movie was a risky but extremely smart direction for the climax of the movie to go in. Endings being left open and up for interpretation can often be a bit controversial, but with this ending, I think it adds to the haunting nature and the disturbing effect that the film had. Not at one point were we ever truly comfortable, and even as the credits rolled, I still felt unsettled. The shots and cinematography in this movie were, I imagine, quite experimental for the time, but in reality, they're just beautiful. The framing, the colour palette of the scenes, and also the grading really supported the theme of the scenes that were unfolding. There's too many to mention, but here are a couple that I thought were just stunning. Old Boy is a movie that I think will still be getting spoken about in another 20 years' time, in 2043. It's a timeless movie that has the weight and power of many of the big Hollywood movies that get spoken about in the same breath. The twist is like no other, and I feel extremely pleased that I was able to watch it without it being spoiled beforehand. It's definitely become one of my favourite movies, and you know what? I'll probably still be watching this even when I'm an old boy. So, there you have it. Old Boy Ending Explained Analysis and Review if you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What do you think of this movie? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.